We move ahead to our next session, which is suture-less muscle biopsy. I'd like to invite the chairpersons for the scene, that is Dr. Vinita Mani and Dr. Ritu Varma. Dr. Ritu is a professor in pathology at our very own institute, and his special interests are oncopathology and neuromuscular diseases. And Dr. Vinita works as an assistant professor in the Department of Neurology here at SGPGI. And uh, we thank them for chairing the next session. Start with the session with uh, Dr. Leslie Sakeko. She is a rheumatologist in New Orleans, Louisiana, and is affiliated with multiple hospitals in the area, including the Toronto Infirmary and Tulane Health System, New Orleans. She has received her medical degree from Tulane uh, University School of Medicine and has been in the practice for about 20 years. She is an internationally recognized researcher, educator, and clinician in scleroderma and systemic sclerosis, sarcoidosis, myositis, pulmonary hypertension, and interstitial lung disease. Dr. Mariam Das Malchi, she is a professor of rheumatology unit in the Karolinska University. Um, we start with a session and then. Uh, The Konkotom muscle biopsy has been performed at Karolinska University Hospital for 20 years. It is the only method of muscle biopsy used there. The samples obtained from a single procedure supplies enough tissue for both a complete diagnostic workup as well as banking for research upon patient consent. There is little if any procedural or post-procedural pain, virtually no complication rate and very rapid recovery with minimal scarring. The concotome muscle biopsy or semi-open muscle biopsy is a safe, minimally invasive procedure to obtain muscle from a patient for diagnosis and repeat biopsies for prognosis. Concotone biopsies require a small incision incorporating discreet and concise collection of muscle, allowing for an abbreviated healing time, virtual absence of pain, and virtually no rate of infection of procedure site in patients, making this ideal for functionally compromised or immune-suppressed patients or patients with skin healing problems, such as Eid, scleroderma. A single procedure will yield a specific collection that is ample for both diagnostic purposes and for research in patients that consent. Obtain allergy and medication history of patient, paying careful attention to the use of anticoagulant medication as with liver biopsy, aspirin, and other NSAIDs should be stopped three to four days prior to the procedure. And with patients on warfarin, an INR should be below two on the day of procedure. The procedure is sterile, so it is important to carefully lay out a sterile field with sterile instruments. Both the physician and the assistant require sterile gloves. The physician should gown and a cap is preferred. The table is laid out with the following sterile equipment. Gauze, 5 by 5 centimeters, which is slightly moistened with 9% sodium chloride. This is what the specimen will be laid upon. If it is too wet, the specimen will overhydrate. A windowed procedure drape, an epidural window drape is ideal. A concotome, hemostats, which is to gauge the depth of the incision. Scalpel, number 11. There are two on the table, one for incision and one for research preparation. Forceps. These are used to test the skin sensation after anesthesia. Two syringes with 22 or 25 gauge needles that are two inches long. The syringes are pre-filled with lidocaine 10 milligrams per milliliter, approximately 20 cc's. 
absorbent, non-woven, round sponge. These are used for hemostasis and for stabilizing underlying soft tissue structures during the concatome procedure. Steri strips for opposing wound edges, which are half an inch by four inches or 12 millimeters by 100 millimeters are a good size. And tegaderm, nine centimeters by 15 centimeters is a good size. This contains also a non-stick gauze to cover the post-procedural incision. Mark area of incision with the closed tip of a pen intending the skin. Concerning vastus lateralis biopsy, identify the most lateral aspect of iliac crest. Follow this line inferiorly until approximately 4 cm below pubis. The concotome will descend perpendicular to the skin. Concerning biopsy from tibialis anterioris, follow finger along the lateral groove of the tibia until reach the widest cross section of the calf. The mark should be just adjust to the bone. This is important to avoid lateral lying nerve networks. The concotome should descend into muscle parallel to adjust bone without touching the bone. Note, patients may internally or externally rotate the lower extremity. Take the time to notice the patient's tendency of the leg and foot while lying supine period to dropping. After dropping and period to incision, take note of whether the foot is natural or rotating in or outward. This will help to give you accurate orientation if the patient has moved their leg. Clean the biopsy area with surgical antiseptic solution. Apply the window drape with the biopsy area in the center of the window. Lidocaine or xylocaine is administered from two approaches, two and a half centimeters directly superior and then inferior to the biopsy site. Divided administration ensures appropriate anesthesia. Lidocaine is delivered to four areas for each of these approaches, with one to two mils delivered in each trajectory of the needle. Begin each approach by anesthetizing the cutaneous and subcutaneous layers of the skin with insertion of the needle at a 20 to 30 degree angle toward the biopsy site firstly. Then redirect the needle to two centimeters medial to the biopsy site and then withdrawing again and redirecting the needle two centimeters lateral to the biopsy site. Lastly, the needle is going to be redirected again, but this time to the fascial layer. Withdrawing the needle again to just below the skin surface, redirect 60 to 70 degrees, descending deeply into the fascial area. Then, complete the approach on the opposite side. Wait one minute. Test area for sensation. Using scalpel, make a one centimeter incision superior to inferior. Depth will depend on patient subcutaneous fat layer, but approximately two to three centimeter deep.
use the closed hemostats to gauge the depth of the incision. Insert concotom with closed jaw. When feel muscle at concotom tip, withdraw a half millimeter open jaw. Allow jaw to press into muscle and grab muscle by closing jaw and turn the concotom anti-clockwise while gently drawing up. At all times during procedure, it is important to stabilize the surface with other hand using protective even force to stabilize the whole muscle while maneuvering and drawing out the concoto. If a lot of resistance is felt with withdrawal of concotome, this could be fascia caught to the concotome and specimen should be released and extraction attempted again. Careful transfer of muscle specimen to pre wetted gas with assistance. Perhaps assistant gently coaxing off concotome with scalpel tip. After enough passes have occurred to collect an adequate specimen volume, blot and clean the area of blood with gentle pressure for hemostasis and oppose the skin edges while the assistant appeals stereo strips. Hold gentle pressure for a minute. Apply tigaderm or other water resistant dressing with non-stick pad over the wound. The dressing should remain for eight days. Showering may be done only after 24 hours from procedure. No bathing or immersing the wound in water for eight days. Post-procedure advisement is unrestricted physical activity. However, avoidance of high-impact sports such as football or running is recommended for two days. Specimen Preparation and Transport At the Karolinska, the specimen is prepped for the pathologist at the bedside. However, this may not be feasible at most institutions. In that case, the pre-moistened gauze or non-stick pad with the specimens will rest in a small closed container such as a specimen cup or a flip-top cassette where it is protected and then laid upon a bag of slightly wet ice contained in a styrofoam box or other container. It should then be transported directly to the pathologist. Specimens from several procedures can be transported together if performed within a window of a couple.